Hi everybody, welcome back to Gram uh, Grandma's Kitchen. Sorry I was away so long, I haven't made any videos in a while, but I was on vacation and with summer and everything happening, it uh, just kind of slipped away. So today I'm going to be making a new recipe. It's called Chocolate Peanut Butter Dreams. These are cookies. Now for this recipe we need brown sugar, peanut butter, margarine, water. Whenever a recipe calls for water, I always substitute milk. It makes everything creamier and smoother and nicer. Egg, vanilla, oatmeal, flour, baking soda, and semi-sweet chocolate pieces. So to begin with, we're going to heat preheat the oven, which is already preheated. We're going to beat together the brown sugar, the peanut butter, and the margarine until it's light and fluffy. Now I've never made this recipe before, so I'm going to follow it exactly, um, just until I get the hang of it. You always follow a recipe exactly for baking. You can switch up ingredients, like if you don't have raisins, you don't have to put them in. Or if you want chunky peanut butter instead of smooth, that's okay. Or, um, you know, if you're making muffins, you can add blueberries instead of apples, or peaches instead of blueberries, it doesn't matter. But the amounts have to stay exactly precise. So this calls for one and a half cups firmly packed brown sugar. So I'm gonna start with one. And the why you push it down, you push it like this, that's firmly packed. Because you always want it nice and solid in there. And there we go, that's one. Oh, there's Dino Brody. And don't get your kitty cat near my baking, please, Dino Brody. Dino Brody's got a new kitty. If everybody would like to meet little Leo. Here, I'll move my bowl. Show little Leo. That's Leo. He just We just got him yesterday. And now Brody, it didn't show it, Brody, get up in the camera a little better. Quickly, quickly, because I want to get this recipe done. Put him on the, oh, wash the table. Oh, there's little Leo. You can't see his face, you can just see his legs. Okay, Brody will make a video with Leo on his camera. Now I'm going to wash the table off, because he put the kitty cat right up on my table. What's up, guys? Baking. We're making a new recipe today, Dino Brody. We're making chocolate peanut butter dreams they're called never made this recipe i got this when i was at great grandma's all right so i got the bacon brown sugar in the bowl so now i need to put in one cup of creamy or chunk styled peanut butter i'm using creamy i don't have chunk style at the moment and you know you go with what you got so, welcome back one cup this, what are you making I just said I'm making chocolate peanut butter dreams. This is a new recipe that I've never made. I got this recipe when I was at great grandma's. She does not remember who gave it to her, but she said she tried it and the kids liked it, so I think all you guys will like it. Who doesn't like chocolate and peanut butter together? Come on, that's like a combination made in heaven. Okay, so we got the peanut butter in there. Another hint, if you make it, when you put peanut butter, if you put a little oil or grease in the bottom of the measuring cup, it'll just slide right out. I just forgot that step today, so I'm kind of scraping. But it will slide that peanut butter right out of there very easily. So that's a little tip from Grandma's Kitchen here. Okay, so now it says to beat together the brown sugar, peanut butter, and butter. So margarine, we need three-fourths of a cup of margarine. So what's, so what's up, guys? How you doing? Oh, Dino Brody's getting into my video, is he? He needs to go make his own. So I need a fourth, three-fourths of a cup of, there's my four, one-fourth cup recipe, or measuring cup. So you make one, and Oh, wait a minute now, come the on. The cat got into something yesterday. Oh, the cat it's got into something. It's green. It's green? Oh. oh, you know what? That's when he crawled in my cupboard and he banged into my food coloring. Oh. Yes, that's what that little darling did. Okay, we've got a big chunk here, so we're going to break it up. Okay, so we mix the peanut butter, the brown sugar, and the margarine until it's all combined. Which doesn't really take long. You see how easy it is. You do want to kind of chop at it and get the big chunks of, of uh, brown sugar. If you find your brown sugar is really, really lumpy, you can, if it gets hard, you can put a piece of bread in it and uh, put the top on your container. Try to keep it in an airtight container, but if you don't, 
put a piece of bread in there and take three or four days and the bread, believe it or not, sucks all the dryness out of the all of the dryness out of the peanut butter and of the brown sugar rather, sorry, and it'll be nice and smooth again. So there, that's all mixed nice and smooth. Everybody see that how nice and creamy that is? Look at that. Chop that's the peanut butter and brown sugar and butter. So now let's see, we're oh, gonna blend hear? we're gonna blend in the water, egg, and vanilla, but like I said, I use milk instead of water. So we need one third cup of milk. That's going in. And it's kind of warm today, so I'm going to take a second and put my milk back in the refrigerator. I don't want sour milk. That's not going to be too pleasant. Okay, so one third Make cup sure of milk. Make sure to like and subscribe to Dad and Brody. Oops. We're going to have one egg. I got to go change this guy's litter box. You go have fun with that, Dino Brody. <laughs> and put it back in the bathroom. We took it out of there last night. One teaspoon of vanilla. Why did we? Because you were going to put him, leave him out of your, in your bedroom with you. Yeah. And one, and remember the tip I told you, if you t measure, if you need a teaspoon of vanilla, the cap is exactly one teaspoon. I've tried this before. Anna Olson showed me that on her cooking show. And I checked it out, made sure, not that I didn't believe her, but you know, just wanted to double check. And sure enough, it's exactly one teaspoon. Um, Dino Brody, you need to go and close that turning cover because Leo likes to go in there. One of these days we're going to close the cover up and we're not going to be able to find the cat. And there he's where he's going to be. He likes getting in cupboards. He's a little devil. We just got him yesterday. We adopted him from the Humane Society through the pet store. Pet and smart. he's pet smart. He's five months old. He's a tabby, an orange tabby, orange and white tabby. He's adorable, but he's, he's long haired. He's long haired, he's adorable, but he's a little devil. He snagged my breakfast and tried to drink my tea this morning. Okay, so the egg, milk, and vanilla are in. So the next thing to do is to add combined dry ingredients and mix well. So the combined the ingredient is three cups of Quaker oats. You have to push down on it. Oh. Okay. That makes more sense. Three cups of oats. So I'm going to use my two cup measuring cup here. And also remember the tip I told you about measuring cups. When you're measuring dry, you want it flat. Now Bye this guys. does have a, a lip on it, so I have to add just a titch more than three cups. So that's two cups according to this. So I'm going to put three. And I'm going to put about three and a quarter cups because you need to compensate for that. You need to compensate for that extra lip that's on there. So we're going to add a little more. Put that in there. So then the next thing is one and a half cups of flour. I think I should have got a bigger, uh, I think I should have got a bigger measuring, a bigger mixing bowl here. So one and a half cups of flour. Again, I'm using this, I'm using this uh, measuring cup, so I want just a little bit more than one and a half. I want about one and three quarters. Okay. There we go. That was perfect. I didn't even eat my other jug of flour. And then I need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon. Be careful, don't grab a half a tablespoon. That won't be taste very good. There we are. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're going to mix this and I'll show you. It calls for, for semi-sweet chocolate pieces. I do not have semi-sweet chocolate pieces. So I'm going to show you a trick that you can do if you only have cocoa and you want to make chocolate things. If I was just to put straight cocoa in here, it would be very bitter. Even though there's a lot of sugar in here and with the peanut butter, it still wouldn't be good. It would be bitter. I'm going to mix all this together. Well, there we go. Slopping it on the table. That's me. Put it back in there. Okay. All the way in. And I've also made some cinnamon rolls, some yeast cinnamon rolls. They're kind of a copycat of um, the ones you can get at Costco. What are they called? Cinnabons. That's it. Cinnabon. I made those. I got those rising over there. Okay, so that's the mixture. 
Now what we have to do, I'll show you this trick. You need your cocoa powder. You need a tablespoon of cocoa powder. I'm going to use two because what the recipe calls for, it calls for a cup and a half of summery sweet. So I'm going to make this a little extra. So you need mix cocoa powder with some butter, a couple of tablespoons of butter, and get my sugar. You need to add a little bit of sugar because cocoa powder is bitter. It's bitter, bitter, bitter. It tastes good when you mix it with things, but it's bitter to, uh, to start with. So there, cocoa powder, butter, and sugar. You mix all that together. You might need a little liquid. We're going to check here. Let me just get it going. The butter might be enough. It should be. Because there are some things that I've called for, and then it's called for um, adding liquid and boiling it and all that. No, you don't need to go through all that. There. Now that is all nice and smooth. So this mimics melted chocolate. There. Let me see if I can show you that better. There. That mimics just pull out of the way for a minute there that mimics your melted chocolate it was just cocoa powder butter and sugar we're going to add that into our peanut butter mixture it looks like we have to add a little more flour because it says to roll these into the into balls but i'm not sure looks like it's kind of wet so we might make them drop cookies rather than roll doesn't really matter. The cookie, the recipe calls for rolling them into balls and putting them on your cookie sheets. Um, and it's a little wet. You can add a touch more flour, just a little bit at a time, to get it so it's workable. Sometimes chilling it will help. And other times I just use two spoons and drop them on. It, it's not going to hurt it if you change it from a drop cookie to a rolled cookie. Basically, it's the same thing. So we're going to mix it all up. Super good. There we go. Now, let's see what's next. Brown sugar. Add dry ingredients. Now you can add... Where the vegetables are? Peanuts. You can add chopped peanuts if you want to. I don't want to. I'm not a fan. I, I like them, but I just would rather use them plain. So now we've got everything mixed in. So you add, can bring you mix shape dough into one inch balls, place an ungreased cookie sheet, flatten, and bake 350, 12 to 14 minutes. So I'm thinking that I might have to just use it by a spoon because I think these are going to be too wet to, to roll. Clear off the space here and get my cookie sheets out. that I need for you guys. I always forget my cookie sheets. All right, cookie sheets out. Now I'll try to roll one and see what happens. Oh, okay, it actually did. It actually is rollable. Okay, that's pretty cool. It looks very wet. When you press them down though, it might be, have to maybe flour the fork like you would traditional peanut butter cookies. You would have to flour the fork. So there we go. This is actually not bad. I might have to add just a titch of flour a titch more because it is getting a little bit sticky making it hard to the first top layer seem to be okay you want just small little one inch balls if you make them all the same size then they all cook at the same time if you have some that are way bigger the little tiny ones will cook first and the either ones you'll either burn the little ones or you take them out when the little ones are done and then the big ones won't be cooked through so all right, so there is one dozen already. This is very quick and easy. And I can see why they call them. I'm just going to flatten them with my hands rather than a fork because it's going to seem to be a little easier doing it that way. Okay, so there we go. You see that? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to bake these off and show you when they're done. They take seven minutes to bake. Timer on. 
All right. I'll make another batch here. I know my kids are going to love these cookies. The chocolate, peanut butter, oatmeal, all mixed together. They look delicious. They sound delicious. I was cleaning out my recipe box, kind of sorting it. Everything was such a jumbled mess. Sorting it back in categories. Got rid of a lot of recipe stuff that either I know how to make and I don't really need the recipe written down or stuff that I've had recipes for and thought it sounded good at the time and I'll never in a million years make. I figured get rid of those. And if I decide ever to make something that's not there, I always go on. My favorite site is allrecipes.com. You can find pretty much anything there. Well, um, um, they have desserts and they have main meals, they have appetizers. You name it, it's there. There is everything on that site. So, all right, that's that one. Another tray done. That's very quick. It's very easy. It is quite sticky. So you can add a little bit more flour if it, you think it'll be easier to roll. But so far, I'm doing okay. So I think what I'm going to do for this next batch, though, so I'm going to try a spoon and see if there's any difference in when they turn out. Okay, I'm going to try two spoons, just scooping them and dropping them. And see, that's how you experiment with recipes. Sometimes you can make your own ingredients. You add, you know, and then you try different methods of baking them. This says to roll them. I'm going to try dropping a, a batch and see how they turn out rolled. You can still you can still form them a little bit in a ball with the spoon. You put it on your spoon like this, and when you push it off. You just push it into a little ball and put it on your cake tray. And there still looks like little balls. And this is quicker, not quick, you know, about the same as rolling, but you don't get your hands all loopy. So anybody out there wants to hear, wants to learn any other recipe, savory, sweet, main dish, desserts, breads, you let me know. And you can put it in the comment. You can leave your email address if you want the ingredient list. And I will email you the recipe. I will absolutely do that for you. And uh, we can bake, enjoy, and learn how to cook everything together. So there, that is a lot of cookies this is going to make. I've already made one, two... One, two, six, nine, twelve, three dozen, and this still holds 15 cookies because it's a bigger one. Well, we're going to have a lot of cookies. I might, sometimes what I do, if I make, if the recipe calls for too many, I'll take this and I'll put it into a small square cake pan and bake it as like a brownie type thing. Cake, and that usually tastes really good. I've done that with the dough with the peanut butter cookie because I've made like extra and I think, oh, okay, five dozen cookies is quite enough. And uh, I will do that. I probably will do that with this too because I've already got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah, four dozen. And this will be four dozen cookies. So that's a lot. And if I want to make a different kind, so we have a little bit of a variety, um, you know, I don't want to make all the same things. Although, I don't think I have... Maybe. I don't think I have enough to do that, but I might. Yep, yeah, I do. Okay, it'll be a small little. We're just going to push these down a little bit. And those have just a couple more minutes to go. And I'll show you what they look like when they're baked. So what I'm going to do with the rest of this is I'm going to scrape it into a bowl that has been greased with butter so they don't stick. I'm going to put some butter in here, and we're going to have chocolate peanut butter dream cake instead of cookies. You always want to grease it everywhere so nothing sticks. If you have non-stick pans, that's great, but after using them for a while, it does get to the point where you need to grease them a little bit because it kind of wears the, wears the non-stick off after years and years of baking. I'm going to put this all right in here. 
And we're going to bake this off and have a little cake. I don't think this is going to fill the whole pan, but it's all right. It'll spread and it'll rise. Although there's no baking powder in these, so they may not rise much. That's all right. We're going to just spread them all out nice, nice and even. Okay. All righty. There. There. Get this mess out of the way here. Check those in the oven, see how they're doing. It says two more minutes, but we're going to check them. Yeah, I just need another minute. Okay. So you all make sure to like and subscribe. Whatever you, you see here, you like the video, subscribe to us. Myself and Daniel Brody. He's got more subscribers than I do. I need to catch up with him, so you can help me out by subscribing. There's what it looks like in the pan, in cake form. So we're gonna bake that off and see how it comes out. I think that'll be good. I'll show you the results of that later, the next video I make. And I made the, my, my cinnamon rolls have risen very nicely. This is what they look like before they're baked. I'll give you the, if anybody wants the recipe for this, leave it in the comments and I will either type it in the recipes or as I stated, you can Leave your email address and I will more than gladly respond and give you the ingredients. You can start your own recipe book, Compliments of Cooking with Grandma, or Grandma's Kitchen, sorry, it used to be. And there are the finished products. When they cool, we're going to try one because they certainly look delicious. They didn't spread much. They're nice and soft. I like a soft cookie. Sometimes peanut butter cookies get a little harder when they're um, when they're thawed out or sorry when they're cooling they get crunchier not hard not stale hard but crunchy hard so that is all for today be sure to like and subscribe hit that button down there we need the subscriptions I've just retired from work so I'm going to be making a lot more videos so I need the subscribers and the likes and the views to uh, start earning money off of YouTube Okay, have a good day everybody. Bye-bye.